Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Welcome to Pentecost Sunday. Uh, this is the 50th day um, from, the, uh, from Passover. And so, uh, Pente coming from 50. And that, that is where that word came from. Nothing real spiritual about the word Pentecost. It's just that it's the, it was a celebration 50 days after Passover. Okay? And uh, we're called Pentecostals. Charismatic, word of faith people or, or, or spirit filled people are called Pentecostals because the uh, outpouring of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. If you had been on Yom Kippur uh, or Yom Kippur, but if you're from up north, I think they call it Yom Kippur, uh, you've been called Kipperans. If you had been on the Feast of Tabernacles, we've been called Tabernaclans. Uh, but it just happened because it was on Pentecost, we're called Pentecostals. All righty, let's go ahead and get into the Word of God. Looking in Acts chapter 1, verse 1, it says, The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, until the day he was taken up after uh, that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he showed himself alive after his passion or sufferings, that's what the word means, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days. So, so how many days was Jesus here after Passover? 40. Pentecost is on the 50th day. So they want in the upper room 50 days. All right? Just so you know. And being a simple, uh, um, uh, 40, 40 days of speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, Commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days since. And we also know from John the Baptist that John the Baptist said that one that comes after me is mightier than I. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. Thank God for the fire. Amen. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said, It's not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Real quick, flip over to Matthew 28. I just want to look at something very quickly. Before, and, and we'll kind of start in from Matthew 28 into this. Verse 17, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus spake and came un, uh, unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Now, when Jesus said, all power is given unto me, he used the Greek word exousia, which means authority. So in the new birth, we receive, and what did he say? Use his name. He said, you know, go in baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We know that Jesus gave us authority to use his name. Amen. Amen. And so he gave us the exousia. See, in the new birth, you receive the authority to speak in the name of Jesus. But then Jesus said, don't go anywhere. Hang out until you're baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen? He, and he said it this way. He said, and ye shall receive power. Different word, though. It is not exosia. It is dunamis. Dynamite power. Miraculous power. Miracle working power. We get our English word dynamite from it. Okay? So Jesus in one place said all exosia is given. How did he get it? He stripped Satan of it. Amen. He, he took our authority back from the devil. And then he said it's given to me. Now you go in in my name. Okay? So he took the authority, gave it to the church. We have the authority. But then he said, look, <clears throat> you know what? To speak, uh, to speak with authority has to have something behind it. Uh, you might have authority to go out there with a badge and put your hand in and say, stop in the name of the law. You can't physically stop the car. You could become a hood, hood ornament. 
You might be kind of riding backwards going, but you'd be a hood on me anyway. Why, what makes authority is what stands behind it. And you see, God stands behind it. His power, his, his dunamis power is behind his authority. Now, you run over the cup, and you'll feel the full force of dunamis. Nine, uh, Glocks, nine mils, submachine guns. I mean, all kinds of stuff. You, you will come in contact with dunamis. Okay? See, that's what backs up the exosia. But Jesus told the church, yeah, I've got authority, you go in my name. And then he comes back and says, now you go wait for the Holy Ghost. You'll receive power, you'll receive dunamis. You'll receive miracle power coming on you. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, you've got something to back up that authority you have. You can speak it, but now there's power to bring it to pass. Amen? And notice the purpose. The purpose is not so we can sit around and talk about how much power we got. Kind of a semi shambach imitation. All right? We love, our brother, we love brother Shambach. He was, he was a, I heard Buddy Harris say one time, he said the greatest preacher of faith he ever heard was R.W. Shambach. Now, not teacher, but preacher. Okay? Brother, brother Shambach didn't know what teaching was. Okay, he was a preacher. He was a preacher's preacher. All right, <clears throat> but you know we 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 got power. We get, a lot of times in our charismatic word of faith circles, Pentecostal circles, we want to we want to get together and talk about how much power we got. But you got to understand that the power is there for a reason. The exorcia and the dunamis sort of work together for a reason, and what to make us witnesses. We're to be full of power. We're to have miracle signs and wonders. We are not to try to get convinced people to come into church because they can keep sinning. Amen. And because they're under grace. And they feel better. We don't make them feel bad. I read a, I read a pastor friend of mine put out there the other day. He said, I'd rather listen to an a, um, a unknown, boring, non-dynamic preacher who's been faithful to his wife all the years he's been in ministry, than some dynamic, charismatic, uh, flamboyant preacher who's an adulterer on his third marriage. And then some bozo. Well, it depends on how far you think grace goes. And they had a conversation back and forth, and this person actually came to the point of saying that because he's under grace, it doesn't matter if he's living in adultery or not, he can still preach. Really? You know, the Apostle Paul said then that sin rebuked before all. Didn't say keep him preaching them. Amen. You see? And so we need, we need a church that's not looking for cute hooks to get people to come in, but a church that's full of power, the authority of Christ, the, um, the, the miracle working power of Christ, so that we're able to be witnesses of his resurrection power, the transformative power, glory to God, so we can bring something to people and transform them. Amen. Instead of looking at them and going, see, this is the problem with, with stupid messages. You can stay just like you are, and it's okay. He sent the power to transform Amen. so we would no longer be the same. If, G if you can just go to heaven and stay the same, there was no need for Jesus to show up. And so he says, you go be witnesses unto me in Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. Look over in the second chapter. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, now that means that we're, you know, we're past 6 o'clock in the morning. They believe days began at 6. We know later on this is about the third hour of the day, so it's around 9 o'clock when this happens, somewhere in that time frame, 8 to 9 o'clock. They were with one accord in one place. Now, remember I said that Jesus was saw, seeing them for 40 days. Remember that? I'm going to mess Brother Bill up. I'm going to move a little bit. 40 days. Now, Pentecost is 50 days. We, we know from church history and so forth, there was about 500 people in the room on, on the 40th day. When they went in the room, there was about 500 people. We know from reading this chapter that 10 days later, 380 left. <clears throat> Are you here? Boy, that was a sold-out crowd. See, you can get a lot of people to show up for the fanfare. 
Amen. But if you're going to get a job done, now listen to me. This is going to talk about church growth. Now look, we, we, have, we have contracted. Left our other building, we came over here, we're, we're contracted. We're, we're stabilizing. But let me say something. All the 380 are gone. Now, we didn't have 300, but you know, you get my point I'm making? Those who were there for the show, those who were there for the fluff, those who were there for the, the whatever are gone. The Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were in one accord in one place. What happened? The 120 got into one accord. Amen. So don't think because the 380 left, it was a bad thing. The 380 being gone were the people who weren't going to get into harmony in one accord so that the power of God couldn't function and work. Right. Now, it's amazing how many folks show up when the power shows up. Are you here? By the end of the first week, the church was 8,120. Because 3,000 got saved on Pentecost. 5,000 more weeks later on that week, and they, said they had the original 120. So they had 8,120. So don't, <coughs> don't get uptight when you say, oh my, people have left. You know, what do you think they were thinking? They're up here in the upper room 10, ten days. Yeah. Pull Brother Hagen there. Yeah, 10 days. They had 500 down to 120. That's not even a fourth of what they started with. It's a fifth. It's 20, what, 20? Yeah. They went down to, they lost 80% of the crowd. Are you here? Because Jesus said, go wait. And the people who will wait on God. And get filled with the fire and power of God. And get turned on by the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Are now infused with power to go and be witnesses for Jesus Christ. Glory to God. To go into the highways and the byways with the power of God. And you are our 120. Amen. Faith and Victory Church. You're the 120. We get refilled, refired, re reconnected. Glory to God. With the power of God. And go out and get them in. Amen. Are you here? Amen. Amen. You, can't, you can't sit there and go, well, what about the 380? They'll come back. I, I'm kind of guessing probably some of that 380 were out there in the streets. They may have been some of the ones mocking. They're drunk. I told you, won't nothing happen over there. They're all in the flesh, all drunk. Are you here? No. They're not drunk. Not like you think. Hello? I remember a number of years ago, and some people were here when that happened, but there was, a, there was a, some, something going on in the church. There was, a, there was a wolf in sheep's clothing that came in, causing trouble in the church, messing the church up. And um, people were meeting during the week and talking about me and how I wasn't doing this and I wasn't doing that. And I didn't know about it. And I'd walk up to somebody in church service and put my hand on their shoulder and say, you know, the grass is always green on the other side, isn't it? Now, the, the, one of the people I did that to was, was an African-American gentleman who turned as white as Ben Bailey. The color just went right out of his face. And you know what happened? Everybody got back at the back of the church after service and got in a little circle and said, who told him? Who told him? Who told him? He, I still didn't know what was going on. The, the holy... See, when you, get, when you get into the crowd with the 380, you'll come back when Scott starts doing something and say, these are full of drunk. These are drunk. These are drunk. They'll mock you. Hello? When, when, when really is, it's not... Peter stands up and says, we're not drunk as you think we are. Seeing if it's but, but the third verse is around, what, what, 14? Well, we better go ahead and read more. I flipped all the way to the first, to third John. We're not in the right place. Okay? So when the day of Pentecost was fully come, came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind, filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and sat upon each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We need more people. Listen, I'm not talking about little babbles where you just kind of go, well, I can speak in tongues. I am talking about an utterance by the Holy Ghost. 
I'm, you know, I know we can pray in tongues, but I am telling you, there's not enough church spending enough time in the presence of God that they're getting divine, supernaturally inspired utterances in the Spirit. Hello. Now, the, see, my grandma was old Pentecostal. Now, they wouldn't speak in tongues unless God shook them, knocked them in the floor, and, you know, and beat the snot out of them. Then they might say two or three words. Because it was so holy, the experience was so holy and so divine, they didn't want to blaspheme or grieve God. Now, see, we, <clears throat> we, we needed to come back from that because it was too far over there. But now we got too far over here. We think, we think it's just a game. We think, we think that the things of the Spirit are just, just toys. That we can pull out like a, bat, like a genie out, out of its genie lamp when we want to do something look spiritual. But God wants to call us back. Hallelujah. Where we have divine utterances in the Spirit. And I'm not just talking about prophesying and meeting and interpreting. I am talking about we're spending time with God. Hallelujah. They were all filled and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Don't, now, don't go off the deep end the other way and say, oh, Pastor, I said we just can't pray in the Spirit. That's not what I'm saying. I say we need, to, we need to maybe change our approach and recognize the holiness and the divinity and the pureness of being in the Spirit with God is not a game. It is a connection of your spirit to the Father of spirits. We are intermingled by a connection through the Holy Ghost in divine utterances where we speak mysteries in the spirit. Hallelujah. And we change a city. We change a nation. I'm going to tell you something. You better be praying in the Holy Ghost about this next election. Because if certain things aren't changed, this nation may be lost forever. It's, it's just in that stage. Make no doubt about it. The transgender, the LBGT, all the different initials are thrown, Q plus, all this stuff they're putting on there now, is about silencing the power of the church. So we can't say anything. So we can't preach the gospel. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And they, this was noised abroad. The multitude came together, and they were confounded because they heard every, uh, they, every man <coughs> heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are these not which speak Galileans? In other words, they don't speak the languages we hear. And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians, Medes, uh, Elamites, dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phygia, Pamphylia, and Egypt, and parts of Libya, and Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes, Cretes, and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Now, they listed 19 here, but let me say something. They said under every nation under heaven, there's more than 19 different languages. Now, let me say something. I hear people try to argue away tongues all the time. They say, well, they spoke in tongues so they could hear this. There's no way in the world they could all hear 120 people speaking in different languages and make a distinction out of it down in the street where there's 3,000 people making a noise about it. There was a supernatural work of the Holy Ghost on their ears. Well, the only reason they spoke in tongues so they could preach to all the people there. They could have got up in the Hebrew tongue because they were Jews. They all spoke Hebrew. I said they were all Jews. They heard, they knew Hebrew. Yeah, they spoke all the other languages from where they were from, but they all spoke Hebrew. So if the purpose was to be able to preach the gospel, they would just, Peter just got up in the Hebrew tongue and spoke. And there would never been any tongues. No, the tongues were a supernatural endowment. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. The people heard supernaturally the message coming out of those different languages. There was a supernatural manifestation there of that also. Okay? They were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking, that may be a few of the 380. These men are drunk with new wine. Now, let me say, I, I remember a, a guy, somebody was in our church one time and said they, they were at a gas station. Somebody used to go to our church. Came, they saw somebody that used to go to our church at a gas station. And they came up and said, hey, brother, how you doing? I want to tell you, you pastor, da-da-da-da-da-da-da. 
What's your problem, son? You've been gone three years. Why? Because I told you living with the girl you were living with and not marrying was wrong? Get married? Stop living in sin? Told her stop dating? Get, either, either get out of his house, stop sleeping with him. Can I make a real point? Stop having sex with him and get married or get rid of him. He didn't like that. I was a mean this. And I was a blankety blank. I mean, he just went all off on me. See, this is what these people do. When God starts to move, they, they're going to mock the move of God. We've got people mock the move of God now. He said, they're, and, and they said, they're full of new wine. And people say, hey, but wait. We've been tearing and waiting before God, and after 10 days, we lost 380. We got in one accord in one place, and all of a sudden, heaven. We heard a sound come out of heaven, and it filled the whole room, and fire appeared, and it sat on each one of us, and we began to speak languages we didn't know as the Spirit of God gave us utterance, glory to God. And Peter says, so, these men are not drunk as ye suppose, seeing it's but the third hour of the day, verse 15. But, I'm going to tell you what it is, pal. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Don't you love it when the word of God comes to pass? When God speaks a word and it comes to pass. And people say, ah, oh, no, no. And they start mocking. They start saying, and you're going, no, 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 no. God spoke. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel that in the last day, hallelujah, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And, you, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall, shall, shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. I'm still seeing visions. And on your servants and on my... Come on, guys, lighten up. I ain't dreaming no dreams yet. I'm seeing visions. My brother Bill told me he had three dreams last week. But anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's just messing on you, Brother Bill. Stay in the flow. See, I'm hearing from heaven. I ain't going to pick on anybody else. I thought about picking on Dick or Benny. I thought I'll just leave that alone. Hallelujah. On my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Notice they keep speaking by prophesy. Why prophesy? Because the Holy Ghost is going to get on, get on you, and you're going to speak by the Spirit of God, the utterances of God, the counsel of God, the wisdom of God, and it's going to be full of the power of God, hallelujah, to pierce the hearts of men and women. Now, they may not receive it. They may not act on it, but it's going to pierce. Amen. Hello? And I'll show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord shall come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever, that's right, you're a whosoever, raise your hand, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Here we have Pentecost. And God shows up in a supernatural, miraculous way and, just, and, and begins the dispensation of the Spirit of signs, wonders, and miracles under the new covenant. Including in that, remember, now if you study the gifts of the manifestation of the Spirit, seven are distinctive to the Old Testament. I mean, not distinctive, but we're in Old and New Testament. Only one or two, the two, two manifestations, are distinctive to the New Covenant alone, and that is tongues and interpretation of tongues. There's working miracles, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, special faith, uh, uh, gifts of healings. All those are all in the Old Covenant. All of them are there. Working of miracles, all that's there. The only tongues of interpretation is in the new. It is distinctive to this dispensation. Hallelujah. And on that day of Pentecost, the church being birthed, where Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive you the Holy Ghost, and they were born again, the church began. And he says, no, That's not good enough. You got to wait. I'm gonna, I, the Holy Ghost is coming. Now remember, the Bible says this that Jesus had the Spirit without measure. Inferring we have, have him by measure. In other words, 
we don't have the full manifestation of the Spirit like Jesus had. Why? You might short circuit. Hello? You know, I mean, some, some folks just kind of go, you know, they get, a little, they get a little dab and they can't even stay straight after that. I mean, they get a little goosebump, woo! Run through a wall. I remember growing up in my, I was a St. Paul Pentecostal Holiness Church. And uh, one of the former pastors had come back to preach a, a revival. This is, this is down in Greenville, North Carolina, out on Highway 33, um, going out of Greenville. Uh, it used to be 264 back then, but they, they, they rerouted 264 and NC33. So the St. Paul, and, uh, they, were, they had an educational building now. It used to be the sanctuary. But they had one of the old pastors come out talking about, yeah, I remember when so-and-so got filled with the Holy Ghost. And he ran over here and just jumped through the window. Ran around the back of the building, came in the back door, and made five laps through the building. And I'm going to tell you, you know, a lot of times people got filled with the Holy Ghost, they didn't know what to do with it. Just too much. Just too much. They had to run, shout. Or how, and that's why people do run, shout. They get, you know, get, get in the presence of God. Just, you just get, they just can't take it. Got to do something with it. Hallelujah. Fire shut up in our bones. And so here we are. The church comes to the day of Pentecost. And, we, and, and here, think about this now. All these people show up to find out what's going on over that, that church where the 380 left. They've all been in hiding. Hello? And the ringleader was the lion denies and cusser. Lion and denying cusser. Because when Jesus was being tried... Peter went to warm himself up by the fire. They came and said, I know you. He said, you were with them. No, I'm not. And want me? Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw you with them. I want me. I know. I want me. And finally they said, your speech betrays you. What do you mean? He talked like people who follow Jesus talked. And Peter went, blankety, blank, blank, blank. It want me. So now we got the lion, the nine cusser. He's afraid. Some little girl talked to him. He's, he's lying to the little girl. Goes out and starts crying and weeping and, you know, and all this mess. Goes into hiding. But 50 days later, he gets filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And he goes out on that balcony and begins to preach a sermon. He gets 3,000 people saved. I want to tell you something about being empowered by the power of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, empowers you to do what? But you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Judea and Samaria, and even to the uttermost parts of the world, earth. Because they came in contact with the power of God that saturated their being. That took him... Who denied his Lord three times while he's being tried and prosecuted. He couldn't even stand with him. They could hang out with him for an hour the night, that same night. And Peter is Mr. Flesh. They come to arrest Jesus and he's cutting Roman soldiers' ears off. Remember that? Takes the sword out, cuts the guy's ear off, he's at Jesus, Peter, go get the ear. Bring it to me. Dirt, blood, smack. Puts the guy's ear back on heels and Peter had, Peter had to think. See, Peter's still flesh ruled. But later, just fifty days, just fifty. He's still carnal. They're out there sitting down eating fish. John's over there laying against Jesus. I don't know if they had cornbread or not. And they weren't supposed to be doing corn during this time. That's why they can't have high fructose corn syrup during Passover and stuff. Hawaiian rolls, sweet Hawaiian rolls. Oof, with Pastor Ed's barbecue and slaw on them. Mm. They can't have the pork. Thank God we've been redeemed. I love pork. 
Hallelujah. Amen. But here we are 50 days later. The liar, the denier, the cusser. Now, if you're from Eastern Carolina, they cuss. They don't curse. Now, you might be somewhere else in the country. They may curse. We cuss down there. All right? I mean, you, you, you cuss, they say cussing up a blue streak. What does that mean? You shouldn't be listening. And here he is, and the Holy Ghost comes on him. And he who was so afraid to stand there couldn't even tell the truth to a little girl. There's just a few people around out there, out there lying like a hound dog on a hot summer day. Stands up in front of that whole community and says, we're not drunk like you think. But we have received what Joel prophesied. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost has come on us. Amen. And he goes on. We're prophesying. We're seeing visions. We're dreaming dreams. Hallelujah. Our handmaidens and our young men. Our power of God's coming on them. And then he begins to preach Jesus crucified and resurrected. Why? Because Jesus said go tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with the dunamis from heaven. So you can be my witnesses. And we in the church need to get filled again. Ephesians chapter 5, glory to God. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. It is not after 12 o'clock. I bind that line spirit. It is not 12.04. Ephesians chapter 5. Forget about that clock. Y'all just going to have to work hard to break everything down. Help Dick and Nathan out, all right? <coughs> Ephesians 5, 18. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Make a melody in your heart to the Lord. Now, what does drunk mean to be inebriated? What does inebriation mean? It means that your physical senses and controls are abated because of alcohol. You, you've come to a place that they're no longer in control. You do stupid stuff. I mean, you can take some guy, get him drunk enough, and tell him, hey, guys, come on, let's go, go lick the electric fence. And they'll go do it. Man, that was a rush. They're crazy. Hello? Take off all your clothes and run through the campus naked. And then some people think, don't do it. Just don't do it. Y'all remember Ray Stevenson on the streak? Fast thing on two feet? There's an audience to be found. Be, uh, anyway. Don't look at all. Too late. She done been mooned. All right. <laughs> some of y'all remember that song. I was in college when streaking was in. You think, really? Why would you do that? Anyway, but you get somebody inebriated, and they'll just do stuff that, what? Because they're no longer in control. And Peter said, we're not drunk or inebriated like you think. This is that what Joel prophesied. See, God wants you inebriated in the Spirit so that your flesh no longer governs how you think, how you act, how you do. You're, you're following your Spirit. And you're open to the suggestions or the leading of the Spirit to go do things. He's not going to have you stick your tongue on an electric fence. Aren't you glad to know that? Hello. I mean, you know, people do it. You know, they, think it's, they think it's cool until they do it. I mean, I know people used to take batteries, you know, dying bolts, stick on the tongue to see if they had enough power. I ain't doing that. I mean, you, want, you know, I got numb tongue. Numb tongue, all right? Can't talk for 10 minutes. But when we get inebriated with God's presence, then our resistance to obeying him lessens. Why? Because all the excuses of the flesh just kind of get put under. Oh, I can't do that. Okay, whatever you say. I'm with you, Lord. 
God wants you filled with the Spirit. He wants you to take that Pentecostal experience and live in it every day. Because he wants to lead and guide and use you to be a witness all over the place. He wants to bring you in contact with men and women who are hurting, who are destitute, who are without. And bring a living, resurrected Aunt God who answers, has answers to everything they're facing. Whether it's disease, whether it's bondage, whether it's captivity. He wants to bring you full of the Holy Ghost into their world. Not to tell them they can keep living like they're living and it's okay. But to bring a life-changing power that will radically liberate them from the captivity and bondage they've lived in. And he needs a Pentecostal church to do it. And stop, stop selling short for some stupid message that absolves you of all responsibility and all action so that you can just kind of go, well, you know, God's grace on you. Keep, keep doing that. It's okay. And come with a power that says, I have answers. I have the answers to what you're going through. I don't know everything, but my God does. You come in contact with a person, the Lord shows me. The Lord shows me. And they go, how did you know? Because I spent time in the presence of the Holy One today. And the miracle power of God's on me to set you free. So you can come in contact with people and go, you won't leave here the way you came. In Jesus' name. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.